99 really been the center point for this Duke program leading their charge. Knows the team so well, and we get going here in Pittsburgh. As we start with Babcock, first time and not the last time you're going to hear her name tonight. Why wouldn't you go straight to her on this one, you know? Why wouldn't you start with your top dog, and that is Olivia Babcock? Leading the ACC in kills per set with just under 4.4. Again, just in her second year with the program. Rachel Fairbanks to serve for the Panthers to start things off for them. Out on the right side, and that one finds the floor. That's Keefe's first kill of the night. It seems very fitting that the first two sets went to Olivia Babcock and Carrie Keefe, yeah. two right sides that are so valuable for their team. And I really think it shows you how this right side position has really developed over the years and turned into a real focal point for offenses. It can spread your offense. It can give you a lot more of a dynamic look rather than, you know, as the history goes, they were more of just a blocker, but now they're also an offensive player as well. Back to the other side now, Valeria Vasquez Gomez, her first kill of the day. 2022 All-ACC first team was second team last year and coming off a game against UNC where she had a half dozen kills. It feels like someone, she's someone who kind of gets overlooked a little bit in this program. You, sort, you look at Tori Stafford, you look at Olivia Babcock, but Valeria Vasquez Gomez has been doing it for six years with this program and doing it at a very high level. And the two things I find really impressive about her, well, great block there. Um, one for Valeria is the improvement she has made since she's got here. You said it's six years, and with each and every year, she has continued to get better. And now as she is this really complete player, she serves really well. She also passes well. She's also an attacker. She has to block. She has to do a little bit of everything as a six rotation player. Almost an ace there, but Duke able to save it now. Free ball for the Panthers. In the middle, Kelly. No mistake there. Free Kelly, someone we're going to talk about a little bit as well. And coming off a really bad injury last year, as you get the replay here, just no problem. I mean, look no at problem. this. Absolutely incredible. But you're looking at that thinking, what sets that up? What sets that up was Valeria Vasquez Gomez's really tough serve. You get a free ball coming back over. That's easy for the Panthers. Vasquez Gomez to serve again. Duke having some trouble in serve receive early on. Panthers with another chance. Outside Stafford. Tools the block. Now this, a 4-0 run for the Panthers. This serving is what is allowing Pitt to have really easy plays on defense and then turn that defense into a high-level offense. I think you could make the argument that Valeria Vasquez-Gomez is the most important server on Pitt's team because look who is up front when she is serving. It is Bree Kelly, Olivia Babcock, and Tori Stafford. You want to stay in this rotation as long as possible. Into the block again, the pit block, flexing their muscle early on. Kind of an epitomization of the ACC in the modern day with these new teams in the league and the talent that they've added. That's exactly what it is. You have seven ranked teams in the ACC. There, almost everyone is going to face this at some point in the season where it is going to look like you're going to have three, four really tough games in a row on your schedule. Pit in the midst of a 6-0 run. But that is snapped in the middle that time. It was Goss with her first kill of the day. And you see Duke against ranked opponents so far this season, not a lot of luck. They did push Georgia Tech to five sets recently though, so they're kind of trying to look to that one and maybe say, hey, let's try and steal a set here and see what happens in Pittsburgh. They played really well in that Georgia Tech match and that was an absolute heartbreaker for them. Good dick on the back end that time by Underwood. And need we say more about the pit block early on? That's what makes it so difficult, though, is they're so good side to side. They're quick to the ball. You're so you're so very not often, essentially, going to get that one-on-one -on -one when you're going up against the pit defense. And that's what you're looking for, especially for someone like Harry Keefe. So Pitt able to side out pretty quickly here. And Dylan Griffin back to the service line for the Panthers. Cat flood inactive for Pitt today. Outside, good swing that time. It was, I believe, Elo. And that's where, though, having that good first pass is really going to help. You can add a little bit of speed, pick up the offense a little bit, make it harder to get set up. Keefe to serve. That one goes out of play. So Duke getting a little bit of momentum back here in set number one. Went down early big, but kind of working their way back here with Keefe at the service line. Yeah. 
into the net that time. That's a hard balance to play. You know, you're playing the number one team in the country. You have to serve really tough so that you can get them out of system and you don't want them being able to set all of their hitters. But also, you don't want to be missing a ton either yeah. because that's giving away free points. And sort of regardless of the sport, you look around and when you try to see a big upset getting pulled off, it's when, you, when you're able to get it, it's the little mistakes that you avoid. And Duke's going to have to fine tune some of that as this match goes along. And another ace for the Panthers. That time it was Babcock. And you can just, if you haven't watched pit volleyball before, watch Olivia Babcock serve and how much different it looks than anybody else on the floor. Error rate is high, but she is still one of the most effective servers in the country due to just the sheer velocity on it. Fairbanks, back set. Babcock that time couldn't get it down. Duke able to find the floor there, so they cut the pit lead down to five. And that's what's so incredible about it, is you don't see this very often, Zach, with this much explosiveness and power behind it. To me, if you're going to do a top spin serve, you have to be bringing that much heat that not that many girls can do at this level. Again, one of the higher error rates in the country on the serve from Babcock, but just so effective when it's in play. And, and that's you can one see of those why there. Rewards, you know? yeah. That's what you're going to get with that type of aggressive serve. Just the talent for a pit up front. Just there's usually with these kind of teams, there's a way you can sort of strategize and say, okay, if we can stop X, then Y will happen. You know, you, know, you get that trade off a little bit. With Pitt, it's like, okay, you stop Tory Stafford, and then you got Olivia Babcock on the other side. So what's really interesting here is we just got Blair Bayless subbing in for Rachel Fairbanks, who is pit setter. And Nisa Buzletepe did not also sub in. So what we might see right here is Tori Stafford coming in and playing in that one zone and acting as the setter for this half of a rotation. Serve from Stafford, block from Pitt again. And Coach Fisher did mention to us that Tori Stafford used to be a setter. And I think along with the double touch rule being different this year, you can have maybe a little bit more leniency with who is taking that second ball for your team. Stafford to serve again. A little bit of miscommunication on the set there. It looked like to Ilo on the outside, but back on the pit side of things, Vasquez Gomez able to get that one down into the block. Pit just keeps on chugging so far. I mean, they're making it work. They don't even have a, uh, a true setter in right now, but as long as somebody takes that second hands, puts it nice and high for a hitter, you have a good chance of putting that ball away. No player on pit so far with more than two kills. Vasquez Gomez, Gomez and Stafford with a pair each. Nice dig there on the receiving end that time. But Pitt still able to get the point. Godshaw had the dig, but not enough as Pitt extends their lead. Yeah, that was phenomenal playing coverage there by Godshaw. Absolutely incredible. And again, that's all it is. It's just crashing, being nice and low, and she gives herself and her team an opportunity. But then that second touch gets called for a carry. 4-0 score and run for the Panthers. We'll give you some numbers early on. Duke hitting minus 111, something they're going to want to get cleaned up. Eight or six attacking errors so far for them, excuse me. On the other end of things, Pitt hitting 385, one attacking error for them. Also been effective from the service line as well. One ace for them. And it seems like they've gotten Duke behind the eight ball a few times on serve receive as well. And that's really what sets it up for you. I always feel like serve receive, you know, and it was and it was very interesting because uh, we were talking about serve and pass with Coach Nagel, and she said, you know, at this level, it might be even more important because it is. It is more important at this level because even though the girls are bigger, faster, stronger, you have to get started with that first touch, and that's either going to come from the service line or service reception. And either way, that's what's setting the tone for the rest of your rally. And I really like that she said that because I think at this level, it's easy to think that the hitting and blocking is all that matters. But that serve and serve receive is really what makes your team go. And that is why Pitt has been so good this year. They serve at a high level. Their service reception is outstanding. And that just allows the rest of your offense to become really easy. Yeah, you get some of the top players in all of the nation from the service line for the Panthers. And 
I mean, in general, when you look around the team, a lot of their stats do look like misprints. But in general, it's, <laughs> it's, it's hard to believe that they're so good at so many things. And that's what makes it so tough for a team like Duke to come on the road one after a really tough ranked game earlier on this week, but also against a team like Pitt where you can't really exploit any weaknesses because they don't exist. Yeah, I mean, you have to play almost flawlessly to beat this Pitt team. Top to bottom, you have to play so well. There isn't a single server that goes back there that you're like, oh, this is easy. <laughs> they have strong servers everywhere. They have strong blockers up at the net. You, you have to be perfect. No such thing as a real bad rotation for the Panthers. Really nice dig that time by Klicka, who has been absolutely spectacular as she gets another dig there. Swing pretty far back that time from Stafford, or from Babcock, excuse me, but she tools the block that time, and Pitt extends their lead to 10. I mean, just 336 is a hit percentage on the year is just kind of ridiculous if you think about it. And then they're also the top team defensively in the country as well. So, I mean, take your pick there. Yeah, it's kind of like those numbers. I don't even know that you would put those as like your goals. They're so good. It's like you put that next to one player. And it's like, wow, they're having a really good game. And it's the team the for team the stats. season. Exactly. Yeah, it's so above and beyond just good. Like these are numbers that you couldn't have even imagined for some of your players as an individual. And I honestly can just not get enough of right now. Tory Stafford playing outstanding defense in one. But also they're playing right now. Guys, these last points, they don't have a true setter on the floor. And Coach Fisher talked about how important it was for everyone on his team to be able to have quality hands enough to be able to put up a good second ball and that's what they're doing right now third kill that last point for valeria vasquez gomez on four swings so far today for her a little bit of trouble at the back there for the panthers and the six of a scoring run is snapped point for Duke, for the blue Devils, and so fairbanks comes back on for the panthers now as bayless takes a seat in this new rotation 16-6 your score in the first set and Gazi Elo has a really interesting serve, too. She's pretty far back behind the line whenever she starts. Stafford, such a powerful swing from the middle that time. She can do it from anywhere, Zach. Front row, back row, doesn't matter. Look where like she leaves one. the ground there, too. And then look where she lands. It looks like a front row attack by the time they land. But she's taking off behind the 10-foot line, which makes it a legal back row attack. Are we sure she can't dunk? Are we sure? <laughs> I remember a few years ago, Lekator member Mene was someone, didn't have a lot of height up front for the Panthers, but she could jump out of the gym, and Stafford's kind of that same breed there as well, as Pitt picks up another point. I mean, this blocking is just absolutely flawless up at the net. Meyer now serving for the Panthers. Good passing there from Duke to set that up, but it doesn't hit the ground and finally able to get the point there. Still a 7-2 run for the Panthers, but Duke trying to claw their way back into this first set. That was a great pass there too by Mylon Godshaw. And then again, you know, they got a lot of freshmen playing on this team. Taylor Williams able to put that ball away. Grace Penn serving. One of quite a few players in this game from California as no trouble there for Fairbanks, who really can do it all for the Panthers. We've seen her as a setter, and there gets the kill. So they actually, nope, they put that ball towards Duke. I think they might have called that a carry? Unless she touched the net. So initially sure. looked like Fairbanks see, yeah, picked I didn't up see the, the call. point, but pit down 18-8 now, or up 18-8, excuse me. Dig by Gottschall. Babcock on the outside. What a dig. Great. Gottschall up. again. Far that time. We'll take a look again on that Fairbanks play a couple points ago. Beautiful pass by Gomez. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. There's the carry. You just got to get it in and out quick. You're trying to basically just touch it with like the pads of your fingers. You don't want that ball in your palm at all. You want to get it out as fast as possible. 
Rachel Fairbanks, someone who's seen her role transition a bit since her arrival on campus, serves it into the net that time, but was used much more in sort of an attacking role in her early part of her career at Pitt, but has transitioned to a setter, and I don't think Seamless does it justice. Yeah, I mean, early on they were using her as both. You know, she was setting from the back row, hitting from the front, but I really feel like this is where she is at her best, is when she can just run in. I mean, she is. She's, she's their quarterback, and she's running this offense flawlessly. Vasquez Gomez just trying to get it over that time. So that goes back in the middle. Really nice dig that time from Stafford on the receiving end. Free ball for the Blue Devils now. Outside Keith into the block yet again. Valeria Vasquez Gomez and Bree Kelly combining for that one, but they are going to call the point for Duke now. I believe double a touch, net it looks violation like, yeah. maybe on Valeria Vasquez Gomez here on the. Oh uh, yeah, it looked like maybe the net. That might have moved a little bit. Good look here from our crew. Outside Vasquez Gomez again just tips it over that time. Now a nine point lead for the Panthers. Free ball again for the Blue Devils. Babcock, such a clever play there. And that's one of those plays most people cannot make because they are just not big enough, not long enough. I mean, this set is really oh. tight, arguably on the wrong side, and all she's doing is just trying to touch that ball and use the other team's hands to just get a nice little tool off the block. That back set from Fairbanks is just lethal sometimes. It's just... You just can't get the players over enough to stop it at times. And that's what it is, though. It's that idea of changing direction. You're running to, oh, jeez. Oh. oh, my goodness. Bree Kelly. Wow. Making no mistake once again her second kill of the day. And we were talking about a little bit earlier. Bree Kelly coming off of a really bad ankle injury last year. And her ability to come back off of that injuries, it's, it's one that ends career sometimes, maybe not even from a physical aspect, but getting the confidence back to be as mobile as she is is such a testament to her development as a player within this program as well. Didn't transfer out, just waited her time last year and ended up finding a perfect spot again in the Panther lineup in 2024. And I thought that was super interesting about, you know, Coach Fisher saying, you know, not only does she have to get back physically, but you do have to get back without yeah. that concern of, oh, I'm worried to cut each way. You know, when you're in the middle, you are cutting so much left and right to get outside and to the right side to block. You have to be comfortable. And now she is back to this level of dominance on both offense and defense. And this is really what they wanted out of her last year before the injury was this type of production. Another point there for the Panthers. 23 to 10 lead. It looked like Duke was getting a little bit of momentum back there in the middle part of the set, but the Panthers have since strengthened their grip on set number one. Four nothing run for the Panthers. VVG back at the service line. Good set that time for Keith. A little bit of an opportunity there, but Panthers set up going the other way now with Stafford. Five kills for her now, set point. Tori Stafford, five for six, hitting 833 in this first set. That'll play. Vasquez Gomez serving for the set. Trouble and serve receive again for the Blue Devils and, and are able to get it over. Panthers with a chance here now on the outside. Babcock, set number one to pit. And it was the year, the leadership qualities in her voice as well. Again, just in her second year, but feels like a real fixture and a leader in for this team. Both yeah. on the court and off the court. Absolutely. And you can see how much, you know, this team has their eyes on something bigger. It is not yeah. about each individual game. And I think the part that I love the most was when she talked about accountability for each other. You know, I think the best teams, it is not just the coaches holding the players accountable, but it is the players holding each other accountable, making sure you're getting better at practice, making sure you're doing the little things to continue to grow, you know, you know, day in and day out when you might be exhausted and tired and you don't want to do serve receive for any more, but you do it anyways because it's going to make you better. Um, so I love that, that, you know, this team has really found its way to, you know, our eyes are so much far beyond just the individual game.
means and more big picture. And the coach, you mentioned that you mentioned the bigger goals for this Panthers team as well, and they've they've picked up sort of right where they left off from last year with their success in the postseason. But we were talking to Dan Fisher during the week, and our producer Ryan Marzak brought up a good question to him. He said, "She said, how much do you think about last year, and how much do they sort of, you know, how much does that affect how they play and things?" And Dan Fisher pretty much emphatically was like, "They don't need to be reminded about last year. We have a very clear goal, and that is to bring a national title back to Pittsburgh." Yeah, and these players that are veteran, you know that they know about it. They've, they've thought about it before. You see those three semifinal finishes, and they're thinking that they want to make that last leap over the top. So I definitely think it is in their mind, and it's you know hopefully it's what's driving you. It's hoping keep that chip on your shoulder to want to get better every day and continue to improve. And you see that invisible barrier sort of in the national semifinal for this Panthers team that has lost in three consecutive years in that round of the tournament looking to sort of keep climbing the ladder in the postseason. And it really looks like they are in a good position to do so this year. Again, the last few years, the teams have been very good, but I don't know if we've seen this kind of depth from a pit team. Keefe to start things off on the outside for Duke, trying to crawl back into this game. Keefe again. The pit block again. And here's what's interesting here. You know, you got Keith running all the way across the baseline to get herself in a position where she's on that right side because she's lefty, getting her where she's comfortable. But, I mean, she's having to work overtime to get these touches. <laughs> Plus, you're going up against a huge block. If you're Bree Kelly, you're probably shading towards her anyways as Duke's biggest threat offensively. Keith certainly getting her steps in. Her volume of work for this Duke team is just outrageous at times as Stafford comes through with yet another kill, her sixth. I mean, she has almost 1,000 touches on the season, Carrie Keith. That is, that's crazy. That is so many touches, so many attacks, game in and game out. I mean, her shoulder, man, working overtime <laughs> every single game. Really the engine that makes this Duke team run. By the way, Tory Stafford hitting 857 through a set and change. Tipped over that time by the aforementioned Keefe, who getting her cardio in once again before that point. I like that decision there to throw over a little change up. She's been swinging away. See if you can get something else to fall. Because that's really part of it against this Pitt Panther team. And that's funny because that was actually a focal point, you know, that Dan Fisher talked about, you know, wanting to improve upon was picking up tips. And I think that's something they don't see much at their own practices because they're a very swing away team. You're not seeing a ton of tips from them. And this is a good example right here. You're not swinging away when you got one blocker up there. But that's great court vision on her, her part. You know, when you're going in the middle, you're just trying to feel what side is the opposing team's middle shading on. And you're just trying to cut it the other way. Bree Kelly with three kills so far today. Had six last time out and nine swings against UNC. The transfer from Florida playing a huge role in this Panthers team in her first full healthy season with the Panthers. I mean, she's been hitting, she's hitting 492 on the year. That, I mean, that's the type of efficiency that you need out of your middles, you know, because they're not going to get a ton of touches, but when they are touching it, you want that ball put away. On the 2021 SEC All-Freshman team when she was at Florida as well. That one over and down for the Panthers. Babcock couldn't putting the finishing touches on that one there. Duke able to get a couple points early on in the set. Trailed by two here at four to two in the early part of the second. It'll be Dylan Griffin back to the service line for the Panthers. Has 10 service aces on the season, the junior from Foothill Ranch, California. Nice pass from the back row that time. Strong swing again from Babcock, but answered by the Blue Devils. Looks like Richardson on the outside. And that's what she Duke. needs to be doing. Rachel Richardson swinging on the outside. If you're, you know, if you're kind of at a size disadvantage against the other team, you've got to be looking high hands. You want this ball to bounce nice and high off of them and give yourself an opportunity to get points. Pitt takes it right back. Ryla Jones in the middle. Ryla Jones, another player on this Panther team that kind of flies under the radar sometimes in her freshman season. And we were talking about a little bit before the broadcast. The depth in the middle with her and Bree Kelly, she's the focal point in the middle on 
a lot of other teams in the country. And she's able to kind of fly under the radar with the Panthers, which is very beneficial, it feels, in her first season as well, to sort of learn the ropes and then hopefully next year sort of take the next step in her development as well. That's what's so crazy about this Panthers team, though. There's there's so much depth everywhere. You know, you're seeing switches in. You're seeing Blair Bayless get her touches. Nisa Buzletepe getting in. There's so much depth that, it, you know, almost any combination, you're still seeing success. Beneficial, especially late in the year as well, because injuries are an inevitability of sports sometimes. And when you have that depth sitting behind players, it, it lets you sleep a little bit easier at night. Nice dig again that time by Underwood in the back row. Set to Keith, finds the court, really good swing from her there. Fifth kill of the day. Really nice back row attack. She's got to stay aggressive all day. She's going to keep getting her touches, whether they know it's coming to her or not. And on the Panther side, we're getting a double switch here. So it looks like we're kind of turning into a 6-2. Got Nisa Buzletepe coming into set. And Blair Bayless swinging on the right side, even though she's outside right now. Buzletepe, someone who Dan Fisher is very complimentary of during the week, said she has been a really pleasant surprise for this team. And she's kind of had that similar arc almost to Brie Kelly, where, you know, she was out for eight months with a shoulder surgery. Now she has to get back. You have to not back, just get back into shape. Then you also have to get ready to play in games. You have to get stronger. Um, but her hands are phenomenal. I mean, she played in every match last year at Texas A&M. She's a phenomenal setter. So it's more just about getting yourself back and confident. So Duke doing a nice job of working their way back into the set with Rachel Richardson at the service line. Someone who this Duke team also really relies on. Had 10 kills and hit 300 in a game against Georgia Tech, but a, a mistake there from the service line gives it back to the Panthers. Pretty good run at the service line for Richardson, though. Gives yeah. in her, giving her team a boost here. And then you have Christina Barrow coming in back row for her. You know, I've seen a little bit of Richardson playing six rotations, and sometimes, you know, she does not play in the back row for the Blue Devils. Nice little change up again on the outside from Goss. Keith again, really good dig from Klicka. Vasquez Gomez into the block, and once again, Klicka keeps the point alive, but only for so long as Ilo and others combine for the block. You got to feel good about that if you're Duke, you know, kind of getting getting back. Again, just pressing over, sealing the tape. Sometimes it's about just being really simple with your block. You got Grace Penn. How about and Grace Penn getting Elo. up there? That's what you want to see. Keith once again going with the off speed. Jones. Second kill for her. Great run there, too. Good connection with her and Buzo Tepe. A little bit off the net. Got to create a little bit of distance there so that she has an angle to open up. Jones, the freshman from Fort Washington, Maryland, coming into today with a 440 hit percentage on the season. Meyer the serve for the Panthers. That one out of play. Williams that time on the swing, trying to give what would have essentially been a free ball over for the Panthers. That one goes wide, and the yeah. Panthers take a 9-7 And lead. that's a good miss for her. Yeah. I mean, if you're Taylor Williams, you're all the way outside. The only area you have on the court to hit to is cross. So, yeah. you know, as you're trying to make it a little aggressive. So, like you said, it's not just going to look like a free ball for the Panthers. Williams gets a better swing on it this time, and didn't get a piece of the block it didn't look like. So the Panthers go up 10-7 as that one misses long. Three zero run for the Panthers. We were tied 7-7 a few minutes ago, and not the case anymore. Williams. Vasquez Gomez. That's four for her. Panthers now up four here in set number two. Good second ball by Mallory Meyer. Meyer, all you're doing is trying to put that nice and high. Give Vasquez Gomez a chance at it. Timeout. We'll get a timeout here on the 4-0 scoring run for the Panthers. 11-7 midway through the second set. 
to make sure in the way she plays, you know, she's not yeah. super tall, so she's reliant on being explosive every time she goes up to swing. So you got to give her a world of credit for being back and doing what she's doing this year for the Blue Devils. That's a great point you bring up, Kelsey. It's just the explosiveness and the nature of her position that's necessary to be successful, especially at this level in the ACC, is such an extreme. And the fact that she's been able to work her way back and get right back into playing shape is just unbelievable. A huge testament to their training staff and her as an individual as well. Yeah, it really is incredible. And this is a tough rotation for the Blue Devils. You know, you have both your hitters stacked towards the outside but also your kind of outlet, which is Carrie Keefe, is not on her strong side either because she's also in kind of that same outside zone in that five area. Set goes on the outside for Bayless. Really nice cross-court shot there, finds the corner. And Pitt extends their run to 7-0 now up 14-7 in set number two. I did like the idea of trying a slide there, trying something different for Duke. But then Blair Bayless being able to put that ball deep cross. You know, I, I like that Dan Fisher said, you know, it's not just about, you know, your practices are so competitive because there's so much depth, but he wants all of his players to have real game experience. Because you, you can't. There's never a way that you can make it look exactly the same as it feels whenever you have the jerseys on. And you, you get Tory Stafford and Olivia Babcock off the court for a little bit, and you kind of think you can exhale a little bit, and then Blair Bayless comes in with a cross-court heat seeker. <laughs> exactly. It's just, you, there's there's no way that you can just relax. Oh, and Pitt was just called for out of rotation. I think Dan Fisher's not going to love that one. Scoring right now 6-2 to in favor of the Panthers. We were tied 7-7 earlier in the set. But Pitt, once again, just like they did in set number one, kind of pulling away in the middle part. Vasquez Gomez again, another really strong swing. Too much that time for Gottschall on the receiving end. And again, it's just about being able to make it work no matter what. Wasn't the best pass. Look where Tori Stafford's at. She's still able to just put up a good ball enough for Valeria Vasquez Gomez to take a rip at it. That's why he wants everyone on his team to be a quality setter. He did talk about Tori Stafford's setting abilities as well. He said his her passing has exceeded expectations, and she can be used as a setter if needed. Obviously, not ne as much of a necessity with this pit team and just their depth everywhere, but Tori Stafford can be a setter if needed. And she'll pick up another point there for the Panthers, 16-9. And we saw it in that first set, you know, you want a bigger block maybe up front, you want to be a little bit more physical, you put Blair Bayless in for Rachel Fairbanks, and then you're thinking, oh, well, they don't have a setter on the floor, but Tori Stafford can take care of it if, if she needs to. Update on her hit percentage as well, it has dropped to 667. <laughs> Godshaw, another nice dig, she's been put to work today. And Duke able to get the point again. Looked like Goss that time, who has been good up front so far for this Blue Devil team. Yeah, Goss, even as a freshman, has been kind of that centerpiece in the middle for them. She's kind of been the consistent one playing every single game. And, you know, they've had some injuries. Uh, Riley Cadle has been out for a, a big chunk of the year, and they've kind of just been trying to fill in that second spot. It's looking like it's turned into uh, pretty consistently in Ghazi Elo. But Brianna Goss, you know, getting these are good touches, though, to get as a freshman. Three kills for her. Taylor Williams at the service line for Duke. Uh, mishap on the set there that time. And the Panthers take it back. It'll be Valeria Vasquez Gomez to serve, who I don't know if it's just me, but it feels like she's been serving for about 75% of this match so far. Panthers have had some serious runs with her at the service line and looking to do the same here on the latter half of set number two. Keith. Buzel Tepe the dig. Stafford. Keefe again, another swing for her. The Panthers able to dig that one out. Stafford with some touch. Nice dig on the receiving end that time by Richardson. And Keefe ends it with the off-speed pitch. 
on her 23rd attempt. Yeah. I absolutely love this up by Richardson. Look at that, coming from the four zone, which is that left front of the court, coming all the way over to the sideline to not let that ball drop, and then you get rewarded for it. Service ace, or service error for Duke, excuse me. And uh, Looking back to that last point, if you're on the road and you're Duke in the midst of a very difficult road trip, it's easy to just kind of, you know, Go on cruise control for the last two sets here. And all right, all right let's get to the next game. It's, 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 but they're still really playing hard on the back end, especially on that last point as well. Just giving it everything on each point that they have, something I think Coach Nagel will be very happy about looking at film over the week next week. Into the pit block again, but Duke trying to recover this time. Keefe again on another swing from her, her 24th of the day. Stafford just so tough to stop. Beautiful cut. Beautiful cut outside the block. Working right inside. Good ball by Dylan Griffin. And then you're seeing that ball go right inside of Ngazi Elo's left arm. Just the cross court position, especially precision, especially from that spot on the court. Eighth kill for Tori Stafford. Griffin to serve. Stafford, yet again. And again, it's crazy, you know, out of system a little bit. That set was super tight, and she just swings away at it anyways. You know, it's to me, it's, it's their ability to work with sets that are not perfect. You know, everybody can take a perfect set and put it away. But you know, when you're running around, your setters, you look at your setters, you know, what? 10 feet off the net, 12 feet off the net, still putting up a good ball, but being able to take a tight ball and just knowing that you have the go ahead to rip away there. You're Fair not gonna see a lot of teams doing that. Yeah, Fairbanks in motion as well, putting just a perfect set on the hands of Tory Stafford. And as you see today's kill leaders for the Panthers, Tory Stafford with those nine. And just, again, really no place you can go to specifically if you're the opposition, try and, you know, keep in check. It's just a, a, a plethora of options for the Panthers. And that's what it is, it's the depth. That's, the, that's to me what is almost even more scary is, is not just having one really good hitter, but having four or five and any one of them can go off on any, any given match. Babcock and Stafford, 14 combined kills today, and we were talking about a little bit in the open. The two sort of centerpieces for this pit team that has a lot of talent, these two are at the top of the list. Oh my gosh, these two are incredible. And you know, they came in as freshmen and looked great last year. They haven't skipped a beat this year at all, continuing to get better. You know, Coach Fisher speaks so highly of, you know, their work ethic, how they have continued to progress throughout the year. And I mean, he said Tori Stafford, you know, doing so much, you know, she's a little bit different in their roles as six rotation players. Tori Stafford, he said, has made a huge jump in serve receive, being one of those primary passers. And that's what you have to do. You have to be able to do a little bit of everything when you are a six rotation player and both of these girls can contribute in so many facets of the game. Both just stellar athletes and we've seen in these games for the Panthers, especially the ones that have gone five, we'll say against Louisville especially, and neither one of them really seem to run out of gas either. It's something we talked to Dan Fisher a little bit about during the week is getting used to playing these longer, because you had that streak at the start of the year where they were sweeping everybody and it's like, well, this is not sustainable for the whole year and we got to get used to sort of playing these longer matches and staying in physical in a good physical condition so we can hang with these other teams. And Tori Stafford and Olivia Babcock just bring it every single time they're out there. Yeah, and it's so true. You can almost get comfortable just being like, all right, three yeah. sets done, hour and a half, we're out of here. But like you said, you know that that's not realistic for, you know, the big picture and down the line and in the tournament. So how do you kind of make your team understand that, hey, we still need to be in really good shape. So even whenever those big matches come up, we're ready to go from the first point to the last point. Long that time from Richardson. And the Panthers have doubled up the Blue Devils here in set number two. We talk about Stafford with nine kills today. Has 10 or more in 10 of her previous 11 matches as well. And you, you talk about it, a three set match for Pitt is not something that's in irregularity by any stretch and she's still racking up the numbers. Nice dig that time on the receiving end. Godshaw again. This one long. 
Panthers two points away from taking the second set. And if you are Olivia Babcock there, you've got to feel pretty lucky. You throw over that overpass, and that ball went just out of bounds. Kind of a little bit of a relief on a bad pass. A 6-0 run for the Panthers. Dylan Griffin serving again. Nice dig. Uzla Tepe again. Stafford, a really strong swing. Godshaw again. Able to keep that one in play for the Blue Devils. Fairbanks setting Stafford again. Kind of sound like a broken record here. Again, I mean, it's just, she's hitting that ball that's barely hitting the fingertips of Tiffany Palman. I mean, it's just, it's so hard to work with. 15 assists for Fairbanks. Griffin serving for the set. Into the block and the Panthers take set number two with no real problem. As the block comes up again, number nine on the day and the Panthers flexing their muscle. Yes, this is one of my favorite serve receive rotations for Pitt and here's why. It's a little different. So you've got two passers. You do not typically see a two man serve receive. It's usually a three man, but here we just have Tori Stafford and Emmy Klicka passing. Then up front, what this allows you to do is have Valeria Vasquez Gomez head her way to the outside, which is where she normally plays, and Olivia Babcock, number five, head to the right side, which is where she normally plays. We can go ahead and roll this, guys. And what's so great here is let's go ahead and freeze. Now what you're looking at is when this ball goes up, you have all three of your hitters where they normally hit and where they are most comfortable. That's Vasquez Gomez on the outside, Bree Kelly in the middle, and Olivia Babcock on the right side. Let's go ahead and roll it. And then now everyone's comfortable. Rachel Fairbanks gets to do her job as QB1, and you get to watch the magic. But another facet to this that Dan Fisher mentioned is both Olivia Babcock and Valeria Vasquez Gomez also then get to block where they're most comfortable, which is also putting you at an advantage. And Tori Stafford has really led the way in the offensive side of things for the Panthers. Another double-digit kill match for her. I mean, it's just, it's, it's every game, Zach. Every single game, she is showing up with big numbers. And you know, something I asked Coach Fisher about is if anybody has exceeded his expectations up to this point this year. And he said, you know, her passing has been incredible. Her numbers for an outside aren't even realistic goals. They wouldn't have even wrote those down at the beginning of the year as, oh, we can achieve this because they are so above and beyond what anyone could have imagined. It's like a baseball hitter saying, oh, I just want to casually hit 400 this year. It just doesn't happen. It was a funny moment on the call when we asked him that, and he was like, yeah, I." that wouldn't have been, like you said, it wouldn't have been realistic to set those goals for Tori Stafford at the start of the year. You're like, yeah, she'll take another step, but this has just been a seismic leap in yeah. her development in year number two. I mean, she's just sprinting. She is just <laughs> sprinting leaps and bounds ahead of where you expect her to be. And, you know, she's just setting this new standard for what a six rotation outside hitter can be in terms of efficiency and production. Going back to your telestration as well, I think it brings up a good point of why teams or why players want to play for Dan Fisher. You, they, he's so good at playing players to what they're good at. We talked about a little bit earlier, Rachel Fairbanks' transition to a setter, you know, allowing Bree Kelly to do her thing in the middle, allowing Tori Stafford to be a, such a presence on the outside as well. He's just so good at unlocking the player's full potential. And I think you can speak on so many players that have entered this program and left as experts exponentially better players. Yeah. They have improved. They look very different. I mean, I think Valeria Vasquez Gomez is one of the best examples. You know, six years later, she's not the same player that she was when she first walked onto this campus. The funny, the funny thing, too, is you look around and as Fairbanks is serving, we'll get back to Dan Fisher in a minute, but Duke trying to stay alive here as that one goes into the net. And you look around this arena and you see the banners and the years on the banners, rarely from before the Dan Fisher. He inherited a program that didn't really have a clear direction. And you could make the argument that he has led the best program turnaround in this short span of time 
since he got to the helm. And it's just been so impressive to see how this team improves every year. It really is. And it's a great. And again, it's, it's a little bit of everything. It's the recruiting. It's the progression. It's the putting the players in a position to be successful. And it is the passion, like we are seeing here, for when he thinks a mistake has been made. Okay. <laughs> It was a top-tier transition there, Kelsey. Is so, Dan Fisher not happy with that call at all, it seems like. So I think, so what the call was, was um, so it was an illegal touch, basically meaning that Ryla Jones has to wait until that ball is over top of the net and over the plane of the net and not on Duke's side to touch it. And it was called that she was over on the Duke side. It's funny. You look at Dan Fisher, too, and it could be 24 nothing match point for the Panthers in set number three looking for a sweep. And he's still going to be showing passion on the sideline there. He doesn't care what the score is. He is going to really put his full presence out there and just push for every point he can get. And you see they're arguing with the officials again, just, you know, just so locked in to this team in this just every game. And it's that attention to detail, you know, at all times of the game, it doesn't matter. You want to be as good and as clean as possible. Middle set this time, really nice swing there from Ilo again, who flying under the radar a bit, but three kills for her as well for Duke. Yeah, and really kind of coming into her role, like I said, you know, she was one of those ones, you know, trying to figure out who is going to replace Riley Cato in the middle. And Elo has really played well these past few games um, against, you know, Georgia Tech. She saw some touches. Clemson, she played really well, you know, really kind of growing into that role. Elo, the redshirt junior from Peachtree City, Georgia. Strong presence in the middle so far for Duke today as Pitt does lead four to two here in this third set. Griffin back to the service line again. Elo, three kills on 11 attempts so far today. Again for her, but this time into the block again for the Panthers. We got Dahlia Virlon getting some action on this Sunday on that block. Pierlon looks to be excited to be coming off the bench and ready to go. No cold feet there. Going up with the block and picking up the 10th of the day for the Panthers. Nice dig from Vasquez Gomez going to her left, setting up Stafford. Number 11. And again, I just can't speak enough. You know, it's so easy to see the result of this play and seeing Tori Stafford do what she does best. But so much of this is being set up by, you know, this very tough serving is making Duke extremely one dimensional on offense. So like when they're having trouble getting to all of their hitters, it makes defense for the pit side very easy. And then you can transition that in the quality offense. Griffin goes into the net to end the 3-0 run from the service line for her. So another effective appearance there for Dylan Griffin. As the serve will go back to the Blue Devils down 6-3 in the set number three. Veerlon, another swing in the middle from her. Saw Kelly with the high volume of touches earlier on, and now Virlon stepping in and picking up right where Brie Kelly left off. An absolutely gorgeous pass from Valeria Vasquez Gomez, able to just run with pace. And she has such a nice reach. Gets really high on top of the ball, able to just put it away. <laughs> so much speed on that serve from Babcock, and the Panthers get a free ball as a result. Virlon again moving a little bit to her right that time to get the contact there. Strong swing from Stafford, but it won't count. Something fell on the ground. Not quite sure what happened there as well. Got a replay. I mean, it's just so explosive. I mean, and like that, the thing is, too, is these balls have a little bit of movement to them. They're, they're not going straight away. They're diving a little bit left or right, which makes it even harder. You have such little time to be able to get underneath it and react. We have these headsets on, but you can hear it ring out through this arena as well. Look at the net that time, a bit of an announcer's jinx there. But the point still stands of Stafford just being that's the sort of the error part we talked about with her. She has that high error rate as well. But again, you'll take that every day of the week with the power she brings from the service line. 
Yeah, that's basically what it is. You know, you're going to have your misses, but you have to like what you're seeing enough to be able to say, hey, we'll deal with the misses. Oh, another strong swing from Stafford. <laughs> You can sort of compare it to a, a, a baseball pitcher who throws 103 sometimes, and it's like, yeah, you might not get the same kind of precision, precision as you would with someone throwing 92, 93, but at the same time, you'll take that every day of the week. But that is what makes it special, and that's why not everyone's doing it, is when you can hit that high velocity, that's what makes it difficult. If you just go back there and throw over a down ball, that's an easy play for the other team, but it's when it has that much speed that it's difficult to pass. Virilon trying to put a little bit of a touch on that one. Duke responds. Not that time, though. Vasquez Gomez. Kill number seven for her. She is second on the Panthers and also second in the game. Breaking the tie at six with Carrie Keefe with that kill there. Her and Stafford opening up that cross court a lot today. A lot of sharp cross, a lot of deep cross. Serve long that time. Fifth service error for the Panthers today, matching the five of Duke as well. Duke down four, Nikki Quinn to serve for the Blue Devils. Stafford setting Vasquez Gomez, who tools the block again and makes, Pitt, make, makes Pitt's lead five, excuse me. And it's interesting because, you know, this this Duke Blue Devil team only has one block on the day, but you've seen them get told a lot. And one of the things that Coach Nagel brought up in our call with her was, you know, looking for positive touches on the block. And what that really means is, you know, you're not looking to get told, but instead you're looking to get those nice high bounces where it puts the defense behind them in a good position to make it up and get a play. But it is just so difficult on this pit offense. It is where the size disadvantage comes into play a little bit. We talked about it with Coach on the call a little bit, and it's, the size of Pitt is tough to contend with, and it's putting Duke in a tough spot here on the road in set number three. Another touch from Keefe. Strong swing that time from Hamlin. Avery Hamlin, another freshman, getting in there, making the most of her touches. Nice heavy hand there. Seen a couple changes. You know, you got Hamlin in this set. You also have Nikki Quinn in as the setter this set for the, Dev the Blue Devils. Hamlin to serve now. Her first attempt of the day on that kill there. Babcock. Back to Keith. That one misses wide on the cross court shot. Panthers lead up to six as Rachel Fairbanks goes back to the service line. See the attack errors for Duke, just a little bit too much if you're trying to get a win like this on the road. Stafford from the back row. That's a dozen for her now. Just so smooth with her approach in the back row. Emmy Clicko with a great up on defense there. Excuse me, 13 for Stafford now, who is hitting 632. 13 kills on 19 total attempts and just one attacking error. Pit block up to 11 now. And you know, when you're out of system, you see Ryla Jones is basically already set up and ready before that ball is even set. Again, when your offense gets to that point where it's just so one dimensional, you know the ball is going to the outside. That makes the pit defense so easy to just, hey, I'm gonna go get set up, I'm gonna be ready to go, and we're gonna be able to seal up that tape nice and easy. Fairbank serving again, 14-6, your score in set number three. Pitt looking to move to 23-1 and one on the season. Another service ace. I absolutely love the decision. Lauren Ingram gets subbed in, you immediately serve at her. Pitt in control and availability and her effectiveness, just such a vital part of the rise of this program. 
Oh my gosh, absolutely. She's done so much for this Panthers team in her sixth year. And like you said, she's seeing that transition from, all right, we're starting to compete to, okay, we have arrived and we are now the ones with the target on our back. And you look at, you know, Valeria Vasquez Gomez has played in, you know, a hundred. Grace Penn has played in 140. Some of these girls, they have not only been here for a good time, Zach, but they've also been here for a long time. Yeah. Too, and it's it, you see a lot of these players, and I know a lot of people take issue with it, and it's it's you know it's opened up a lot of loopholes with eligibility and things like that. But the value of having someone like Vasquez Gomez on the team and just able to sort of take a lot of the young players' pickets who have a lot of talent and show them how it is to be a student athlete at this level is just so valuable. Yeah, and you're kind of seeing that across the board of these you know fifth and sixth year players kind of really leading the charge for their teams from a veteran standpoint. And I think it's really helped I mean you look at SMU's team they were they were, yeah. they were built with Great predominantly point. grad transfers you know but like look where they're at now and it's and it's it's given you this extra layer and an ability to kind of put together a team and be able to piece together a roster that can can compete at the highest level there's more than one way to do it and the way that Dan Fisher's team has been doing it is checking all of the boxes 17-7 now in set number three. And around, keep up to seven kills, and that time, another point on the board there from, looks like Elo again. Yeah, nice swing there by Elo. But She's then, been you good. know, Ryla Jones had a nice touch on that block. I would have loved to see a touch there from either Babcock or Buzla Tepe. Again, Hilo. Great timing there. Ryla Jones going up, sealing the tape. That's got to feel good. Yeah, Elo now two blocks, four kills on the day. Stafford's strong swing. Quicka setting Babcock. Oh, nice crafty. Caught him sleeping up front. Looked like Mir. That, that to me, I mean, that's more of a mental mistake than a physical mistake, not knowing where the setter is. And right now, and she is up front, which means she can attack in the front row. Tough angle on the swing that time from Babcock gives Duke a chance. Stafford. Nice dig by Underwood. Babcock. Able to finish off a lengthy point that time for the Panthers. Yeah, great coverage on the Duke side. I mean, you're just trying to crash towards whoever was set, trying to get a touch on the ball. It's like an offensive rebound. You're just looking to give your team another opportunity to get the point. Dylan Griffin to serve again. Duke putting themselves behind the eight ball a little bit in serve receive. These are the most two, these are the two most important aspects of the game, serve and serve receive. If you cannot get that first pass, these job more difficult, the setter, the hitter, you know, then going back on the defensive side, it's just kind of that domino effect. I kind of always think of it almost like you're yeah. when it's doing good, but when it's doing bad, all of a sudden, yep. everybody notices there's a problem. Babcock. He misses wide, but <laughs> goodness. Get a good look here from. He contacts that ball. Got over the block, too, yeah. Oh, my gosh. There's such athleticism. I mean, that's basically eliminating. And you're just having to play completely around it. That was swing number 19 for Babcock, by the way. Elo. 
Net violation on Pitt. Eo's been impressive. Her hit percentage not where she wants it to be at .67, but at the same time. I completely agree. Babcock. Click a Babcock again. You know, you got to give Christina Barrow credit there. That was a great first up, but that is hard to do time and time again. Just wears you down. Nice pass. Really good pass that time from Keith. Oh, and the block for Duke. We haven't seen it too much today, but an emphatic roofing there that time. Really nice block by Elo. Again, just 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 sealing that tape up. Absolutely cool. beautiful pass there. Again, they almost went to like a four-man serve receive to make sure they had all the court covered. And then Elo timing it up perfectly. I hope Keith gets a nice nap in after this game. She has been working hard back there for Duke. 31 touches, Zach. Oof. 32 now. That's crazy. And she's running the length of the court half yeah. the time as well. She's such the focal point that even when she's back row and they're in serve receive, she has to find a way to be available no matter what. Especially, again, when you're not passing that well, you know, the first domino that falls is the middle. You can't set the middle. Then it's going to be hard to set the outside. Then all of a sudden you have to go to her in the back row. Stafford serving for Pitt. Oh, Blair Bayless again. Haven't seen her a ton, but when she puts a swing on it, we have heard it and seen it both so far today. She has tons of power. She has a really, really fast arm swing. When she gets a hold of it, she tears it up. Be a timeout for Duke as Pitt trying to put the finishing touches on win number 23 on the season. And it's tough to really keep saying the same things over and over again about this team, but another really flawless performance for the Pitt Panthers who continue ACC play and just seem to keep building momentum. You had the loss at SMU, but at the same time, a lot of teams lose momentum when that happens and they've just kept rolling as you see their next couple games here. And you got, you, you circle November 27th a little bit again, you think. Absolutely. That's what I'm looking at right now and thinking this is, I mean, that could again, that could basically determine the ACC with where they're at right now. It's, you know, you don't want to look ahead and look past a, a ranked team in Florida State or Miami, who has had a good season. But you had mentioned earlier, beat the number one team in the country yeah. early on. So you don't want to look past anybody. But program that keeps racking up the conference wins. As you see uh, a few times ago when these two teams played in Cameron Indoor back in 20. And just seeing what, you know, the Panthers have done under Dan Fisher, absolutely incredible. And going back to that Louisville match, bro, Kelsey, we both watch a lot of sports. I'm not sure I can think of a matchup that's more exciting and has been more competitive in sports that I've seen than Pitt and Louisville. Into the block, and that is an appropriate way to end it. Block number 12 for the Panthers as number one shows why they are number one. 20th sweep of the season. Zach, there is not a time where you are tuning in to watch the number one team in the country and you will not be entertained. This team is so good. They are stacked. They have depth. They play volleyball the right way. 
such a complete, complete team, and this is going to be something that you're looking for towards the end of the season at this team. Alongside Kelsey Bonk, producer Ryan Marzok, and our entire fantastic crew here at the ACC Network. I've been Zach Gibney saying so long where Pitt picks up yet another sweep. To watch this game in its entirety, as well as other games on the ACC Network, download the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the world.